we can, we can continue the celebration of the birth of Christ is to determine to live our lives to fulfill his purposes in this world, in this life, with the people we encounter. And today as we worship, there's a number of songs we're going to sing, and I'm going to be preaching from the first chapter of John's Gospel. One of the songs we're going to be singing is a very beloved Christmas carol, O Come All Ye Faithful, Joyful and Triumphant. And uh, another part of the phrase talks about, another part of the song talks about sing in exaltation. Does anybody here besides me ever not feel joyful or triumphant or able to sing in exaltation? Uh, those are beautiful words, and it's a beautiful Christmas carol. Uh, I came across a new version of O Come All Ye Unfaithful. And uh, in just a moment after some video announcements, you're going to see, you're going to hear and, and see this song. Uh, the lyrics will be projected for you. Some of the lyrics say, O come all ye weak and unstable. O come all ye weary of praying. O come all ye barren and wasted. O come ye who are bitter and broken. O come with fears unspoken, with guilt and hiding ones. Though you have nothing, come. O come all ye unfaithful. For he is the offering on your behalf. Uh, Christmas is a very joyous time, but not so much for some folks. There are thousands of people in our own state right now who are dealing with some tremendous crisis and trauma because of the tornadoes that struck our state a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the tragedy is, is horrendous. Thankfully, people are answering the call to meet needs and to celebrate with those who are hurting by giving and loving and serving. So as we worship today, I want us to understand that it's okay if there are times when it's not joyful and triumphant, that God is the perfect gift He has given us in His Son. Jesus Christ. Take a moment to look at some of these announcements and then enjoy the video of O Come All Ye Unfaithful. Hello, Farmdale family. I just want to kind of give you an update on our schedule here at the church through the holiday season. It's always good to know what's going on and what's not. And Wednesday, December 29th, there will be no activities here at the church. We want uh, all of those who serve throughout the year, work very hard throughout the year to do things, to have a little time off to be with family and to rest a little bit. And so nothing on Wednesday night, December 29th. Good morning, Farmdale family. Bill Meadows here. Let's see, I wonder what time it is. Uh, it's tax time, so you'll be needing your contribution form soon. Let's look at our checklist. Do we have our ties all paid up? Check. How about our faith promise? Yep. What about greater impact? Yes. And children and youth offerings? Yep. We've got it covered. The last day to make any contribution to the ministries of the church will, for 2021 tax purposes will be on December the 26th. So put it on your calendar. And if you have any questions, please see me prior to the last Sunday of the month. And again, thank you for your contributions at Farmdale in building the kingdom by supporting all the church ministries. Great news uh, for some of you guys who work second shift or for some of you that just don't like to drive at nighttime. We're going to be starting a Bible study for men on January 5th. It's a Wednesday, January 5th at 2.30 p.m. It'll usually be about 45 minutes to an hour. And it'll give some of you guys a chance to just can't be here on Wednesday night for the regular men's group meeting, a chance to be involved, plug in a little bit, and grow into faith. Hope you can join us. Please stand, if you will, and remain standing as I pray, and then we'll worship through music. Let's pray together. Father, 
Today we ask that you would help us to honor you through our worship. Will you move our hearts as we remember how you came to her through a peasant girl? Move our feet in ways that will make a difference through humility, through justice, through mercy, so that we might live out your love in this world. Motivate us to not only remember the past, but also to look ahead to the promise of your sure return when all things will be made right for all the people of all the earth. Father, today may the hopes and dreams and fears of all the years be met in you today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing, please. Good morning. Please join us in worship together. have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned you have enlarged the nations and increased their joy they rejoice before you as people rejoice in the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder for it is the day of Midian's defeat you have shattered the yoke that burdens them the bar, <clears throat> the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor. Every root, every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, <clears throat> will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. As we pray this morning, we want to lift up all of the needs that are around us in our families, in our community, in our world, in our nation, in our state. Uh, Doug Brooking shared with me that a friend of his from high school um, passed away from the coronavirus this week. Pray for that family. The, the name of the family is Kelly. 
Um, continue to pray for our pastor. He has this vacation Sunday for the end of the year. Pray for our uh, leaders in our church as we seek to fulfill the calling God has placed upon us here at Farmdale to be the lighthouse that we can be in our community. So I invite you, if you will, to stand as we pray together this morning. You can see the needs that exist. There are others, I'm sure. Let's pray. Father, you are a God who is above all and beyond all and can do far more exceedingly abundantly beyond that which we can ask or even imagine. And we thank you, Lord, that we serve a God like that. Nothing is too great for you. Thank you for the ever-abiding presence of your Spirit in our lives. Thank you for the leading of your Spirit as we seek to do your will and as we seek to follow your bidding individually and as a congregation. We rejoice in the reality that Christ was born and he came for us and he is coming again and we give praise for that assurance. Until then, we thank you for placing him at your right hand so he can intercede on our behalf. And we're thankful that he calls our name to our Father all the time, remembering us where we are in our life circumstance. We honor you today, Lord, with our worship, and we pray that all that is said and done will give you glory give you honor. Thank you for those who have come today. Thank you for those who have ventured out on this day after Christmas. I pray that you would be with those who might be traveling today and give them protection over the highways. I pray for the, the victims of the tornadoes that struck our state, the continuation of the trauma and the chaos that many people are dealing with. Would you come alongside of them, Lord? And we're thankful that we as a congregation and other congregations have been able to help in the ways we were able to help. And, and I pray your blessing upon that which we sent, upon every article, every item. May it make a difference in somebody's life. We thank you, Lord, for each person gathered here today, for the love that you have for us, for the unending grace that is available to each of us. And we ask that you would guide us as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. It's in your wondrous holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remain standing as I read the Christmas story and then we're going to sing again and have more scripture and song. Luke chapter 2. We have a tradition in our family that we, uh, in the morning, before anything else, we like to read this account in Luke's Gospel. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of, Sy of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth, gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for him elsewhere. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Now when the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And they had seen, when they had seen him, they spread their word concerning what, they had been told, what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Remain standing. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come let us. toward the Advent wreath. We have been celebrating Advent, and over the course of the last four weeks, we've anticipated the coming of Jesus Christ through the lighting of each candle, and we reflected on the hope and the peace and the joy and love that is found in Him. Today, we celebrate the reality that our Savior has arrived. We rejoice in the one who came, not in the glory of a palace or with the riches of a wealthy person or the power of someone in authority, but we rejoice with the peasant in a manger. We rejoice in the one who is the fulfillment of all of our hope. We rejoice in the one who brings peace in the midst of all of life's storms. We rejoice the one who 
provides the source of real joy. And we rejoice in the one who personifies love in every aspect. And today we illustrate his presence by the lighting of the Christ candle. This is a symbol that the light has come to shine into the world. And it continues to shine in the darkest corners of our world. And as we look at the radiance of the light that comes from this candle and the other candles together, we're reminded of the true light that has come. His name is Jesus. But we also look with a hopeful expectation of the light that will come when he returns. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. We're going to walk through a passage of Scripture that is a very powerful passage of Scripture. It's found in the Gospel of John, the first chapter. And I invite you, if you will, to stand as I read John chapter 1, 1 through 16. John 1, 1 through 16. In the beginning was the Word... And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, though, and through all him, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light, <clears throat> the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe in him. 
He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those he believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word was made flesh, and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying this, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. And out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. Or one translation puts it, grace upon grace. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the word, Jesus Christ. Guide us now as we look at the scripture today. Lead us in your truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to unpack a little bit of this passage for us today. Verse 1 says, The Word became, uh, verse 14 says, in the beginning was the Word, and then in verse 14 it says, the Word became flesh, made His dwelling among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, John's Gospel does not include the nativity that is traditionally surrounded with the birth of Christ. No, John's nativity gospel focuses on not Joseph or Mary or angels or shepherds or the wise men. It focuses on the Word becoming flesh. It focuses on the miraculous incarnation. God becoming a man. It focuses on Him entering our world and becoming Jesus in the manger. Notice the language of John chapter 1. There in the beginning, his name was the Word. At his birth, his name is the Word. The Word who will rule the universe one day was there as a baby in a manger. The Word whose voice brought creation into place is now the Word who can only communicate with a few cries and with a few whimpers and still needs His diapers changed. The Word who has been there from eternity past now has a lifespan. The Word who was limitless can't even move now without being carried from place to place. God in the flesh. He came as God in the flesh to completely identify with us. And and why does He want to identify with us? Because He wants us to understand the difference between living in the light and living in the darkness. In Him... The Word was life, and that life was the light of all humanity, of all mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Darkness is no match for the light of Jesus. 
There's so much darkness around in our world today. The only thing that can dispel the darkness of sin and the darkness of sadness and the darkness of discouragement and the darkness of depression and the darkness of illness and the darkness of of tension within families and the darkness of lack of financial need, the only thing that can dispel the darkness is the light of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Verses 4 and 5 says, In the beginning, the Word was life, the light of all mankind. The darkness can't overcome it. You see, from the very start of the birth of Christ, Light was separated from darkness. In the manger, Jesus coming in the flesh separated light from darkness. And in the light of His presence, we see a Savior who is full of grace and truth. We see a Savior who doesn't want life to be as complicated as we tend to make it at times. In a sense, life can be complicated. I'll give you an example. You can can take up your Bible. Uh, You can choose a particular book of the Bible, even, even the shortest book of the Bible, and you can study that Scripture for month after month after month, and you will still not fully understand all of the depth of the meaning of the Scriptures that you read. In a sense, it's complicated. In that sense only. But the reality of the light coming into the darkness is a simple thing. Because when Jesus has come to be the light, He invites us into a relationship with Himself. And what does He say? What does the Word say to us? It's simple. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be brought from darkness to light by confession and by belief. That's not complicated at all, my friends. As a matter of fact, someone has said that the salvation message is the simplest message of all. Accept, confess, believe. On one occasion, a religious leader came to Jesus and he asked Jesus a a very simple question even though he was expecting a profound answer. He came and he said, Master, what is the greatest commandment? Now some biblical Uh, scholars think that he was trying to trick Jesus and he was trying to confuse him. Uh, Little did he know that he was God in the flesh, so God can't be confused, in case you didn't realize that. And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets Hang on these two commandments. Jesus summarizes the whole of the Old Testament teaching to this man who was inquiring. He summarizes them with two phrases. Love God, love your neighbor. Pretty simple, isn't it? I think we conclude that if we we stop loving God, you'll end up with Complexity and darkness. If we stop loving our neighbor, again, you'll end up with complexity and darkness. You see, Jesus is the Word. He is the child in a manger who comes to bring light so that you don't have to stay in the darkness. Before everything existed, He was. Before anything else was in place, He was. Jesus is the Word. 
In the beginning was the Word. And the Word who made declarations and promises. The Word taught wisdom and how God wants us to live according to His Holy Word. The Word, Jesus, who speaks. And the Word who dialogues with us. The Word gives reasons. And the Word tells us that we will need to give an account for our life someday. The Word, Jesus, who confronts the spiritually arrogant and comforts the spiritually broken. He is the Word who was logical and who was relational. He is the Word who told stories, who taught doctrines, and who silenced those who tried to trick Him. Everything we need to have light in our life is found in the Word, Jesus Christ. And so, to me, the life choice that we must make is very clear. But Scripture tells us, as we read, He was in the world. And, through, and though the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to His own people and He was not received by them. Today, a great reminder for all of us. If we're going to see the light and live in the light, we need to understand that it can be only found in Jesus Christ. Do you recognize and acknowledge the living Word, the Logos, Jesus Christ? He is the living Word of God, the incarnate God, the God in the flesh, the God who has put on skin, the God who identifies with each of us wherever we may be in life or wherever we may go in life. He is the God of the Word. So our identity, our identity is found in the wonderful miracle in a manger. The miracle of the birth of a child who was relegated to an animal stall because there was no room anywhere else. A child who didn't have a comfortable cradle to lie in but was placed in a feeding trough for animals. He came as the Word of God, living and becoming light for all of us. And because of the miracle in the manger, because of the miracle of the incarnation, the true gift of Christmas is that this Word, this light, this love is for all of us. Now this morning, before we leave, I would like us to, to reflect upon two things. First thing is that the light has come. The light is with us. And the light will always dispel darkness. Darkness cannot stand the light. The second thing I want us to reflect on is that we, by the declaration of Jesus Christ Himself, we have been called the light of the world. We are to shine the hope and the peace and the joy and the love of Jesus in our darkened world. I don't know how many of you have been following along with the Advent reading, but I want to read yesterday's Advent reading. It's entitled, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Psalm 40, verse 10 says, I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. John 1.14 states, We have seen His glory. He didn't say we have glanced at His glory. We have glimpsed His glory. He doesn't read, 
doesn't write, we pre- we've previewed or we've peeked at his glory. John stand, doesn't stand at the back of a room or listen to someone else describe Jesus. No, John pulls out his bifocals and his binoculars and he gets out his telescope and his microscope and he focuses and fixes his eyes. John sees Jesus. So did others. It wasn't enough for the shepherds to see angels. They made haste to see Jesus. It wasn't enough for the wise men to see the star. They traveled hundreds of miles to see Jesus. It wasn't enough for Simeon to see the temple. He had been there and longed for years to see the Messiah. Don't settle for angels in the heavens, stars in the sky, or a temple in Jerusalem. Don't settle for a tree, a turkey, toys, some tinsel. Seek the Savior like the shepherds did. Worship Him like the wise men. Hold Him tight like Simeon. Then tell the world, we have seen His glory. Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. He is alive. He is the light. And He will dispel all darkness. As we close today, I want us to sing beautiful maybe the most loved Christmas carol, Silent Night. And I'm going to ask Steve and the crew up there to shut off all lights that we have on currently. Thank you. Except for the exterior light and the light of the candles. This is a little taste of darkness. Jesus lights our way. And I invite you, if you will, to stand. And we're going to sing Silent Night. And then I'll offer a reading of a benediction. And you will be dismissed. Lift your voices with me without accompaniment. Leave the lights off. I don't need them. I look better in the dark anyway. I'll try to get it started on an even note that all of you can reach. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin Mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shepherds quake at the sight, glory stream from heaven afar, heavenly hosting. Alleluia, Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born, silent night, holy night, wondrous star land your light with the angels let us sing hallelujah
to our King. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Notice the words of this last verse. Son of God loves pure light. That's who Jesus is, the Word. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Walk in His light. Live in His light. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant be from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace Jesus Lord at thy birth Jesus Lord at thy birth When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when their shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the sad heart, and to be the light He has called us to be. May God bless you, and I wish you a happy new year.